and your mercy endures forever. Come on, clap your hands and shout if you believe it tonight. Come on, everybody. Go to the book of Mark, chapter number seven. The book of Mark, chapter number seven. I will read from verse number one to verse number thirteen. Mark chapter seven, verse one to verse number thirteen. The Bible says, Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes came together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now, when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with defiled, that is, with unwashed hands, they found the fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands in a special way, holding the tradition of the elders. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other things which they have received and hold, like the washing of cups, pitchers, copper vessels, and couches. Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? He answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and many other such things you do. Verse number 9, he said to them, All too well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and he who curses mother or father, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is common, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or mother. Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have handed down, and many such things you do. The church said, Amen. Amen. I want to preach on what I call exposing traditions that bind us. Exposing traditions that bind us. There are traditions which are good, and there are traditions which are bad. And these traditions can bind us even as believers. In the portion of scripture that we have read, we pick out a story of something that is happening. There are these Pharisees and scribes who have come from Jerusalem, and all of a sudden they discover something with the disciples of Jesus. They find that these disciples are eating bread, and they have not washed their hands. Now the washing that the scripture is talking about here is not just the ordinary kind of washing. It was a ritual cleansing that they discovered these disciples were not doing. And therefore they found fault with the disciples. So they asked Jesus and Jesus responds and highlights a number of things. And we'll be getting to that shortly. But I want us to look at the Pharisees for us to understand who they are. The Pharisees, first and foremost, were a conservative religious and political group. They were very conservative. They were a religious people. They were a political people. They were the people of the day that the rest of Israel looked up to. And we discover this because the scripture says they came from Jerusalem. I want you to realize as well that the Pharisees were strict observers of the law of Moses. The law that was handed over in Mount Sinai that is what they concentrated upon. They were very strict observers of the law of Moses. If we're together, say amen. amen. I have to go through this, but in a short while I will be preaching. So tell your neighbor, hold, hold your peace. Amen. There is something interesting about the Pharisees that I find here. The Pharisees, the Bible says in verse number 3, that the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they washed their hands in a special way holding the tradition of the elders. They were holding on to the tradition of the elders and this particular tradition made them to wash their hands in a particular way. 
I did some research on this and I discovered this is how they washed their hands. There would be very big jars of water and they would come to the jars of water and they would take some small cups and take the cup and lift it up and raise the hand really high and let the cup just tilt over. Then the water would go down their hands all the way to their elbow and they would do that about two or three times and then when they are done with that, they would put their hands down so that the water that came all the way to the elbow needs to go back down. It was a special way of washing hands. There was nothing that was godly about it. It was just a tradition that was handed down from the elders. In other words, there were things that the fathers of these Pharisees and the fathers of their fathers and all the way back that they used to do. Can you say amen? amen. Are we still together? Yes. Let us carry on. Now the Pharisees found these traditions because of the diverse interpretations of the law as they read it. When they would read something in Deuteronomy or something in Leviticus or something in Numbers, they would come up with an interpretation and therefore develop a tradition and teach the people, this is how you ought to do. And one of those traditions was the washing of hands. Now the Pharisees were a very strange people because they taught one thing and they practiced another. That is what you'll discover shortly with Jesus. And I'll be getting to that in a short while. The Pharisees did things so that men could notice them. That's why they found fault with the disciples. Because they realized these disciples are walking with Jesus, but they're not walking in line with the traditions that we have received. And another thing that was interesting with the Pharisees is that they had ways of skimming money so that they could enrich themselves and leave the people where they were. That was the Pharisees. Now the Bible says that they found fault with the disciples. They saw the disciples and they saw they had a problem because they did not follow tradition. Now I don't know about you, but in the context which you are living in today, some people can have a problem with you because you are not doing things according to tradition. They will say to you because you are a lady, you are not supposed to get to this point in life. They will say to you because you are a young person, you are not supposed to attempt this kind of things. They will say to you because you are the second or the third or the fourth born, you are not supposed to do this kind of things. But I came to preach to you this morning. These traditions that are made of men, that are limiting the people of God from accessing their destiny and their potential. These traditions must come down in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are together with me, say Amen. amen. These disciples were seen to be against the tradition. The Bible says that these Pharisees found fault with them. And they asked Jesus, why is it that your disciples are not washing their hands before they eat the bread? And the Bible records that there were many other things which they received and they upheld, like the washing of cups. They were not just washing cups that way. There was a special way of, watch, of washing cups and pitchers and copper vessels and couches. Now Jesus makes a response and I want us to focus on it. The charge that the Pharisees brought on the disciples is that they did find them just guilty of poor hygiene. But they found them guilty of not observing the rituals of cleansing. They were very disturbed. Why did these guys go through the entire ritual of washing their hands? And they found that this way was, a, you know, they found that unless you washed in this particular way, if you touch anything, it would become defiled. It would become ungodly. It would become unholy. So as far as the Pharisees were concerned, it was that the, the defilement could be spread by way of touching. And they prescribed these elaborate ceremonies of cleansing. Now, these elaborate cleansing ceremonies were part of the tradition that came down from their elders. If you'd stop a Pharisee and ask them why they did what they did, they could not explain to you, they could not pinpoint it clearly, but they'd only tell you this is the tradition that was handed down. I don't know if you've discovered, there are people who do some things in life and when you ask them why they are doing, what they are doing, or why they believe, what they are believing, they cannot explain it. They only tell you, this is our tradition. This is how we have done things. This is how my father did it. This is how my grandfather did it. But I came to preach to 
you today. You are not your father. You are not your grandfather. You are not your uncle. You are not your ancestors. You are a different entity. You have been saved by the blood of Jesus. You have been washed by the blood of Jesus. And these traditions that bind us, the time to leave them has come. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Now Jesus makes a response. And there are four things I want you to see. Number one, Jesus sees the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. Jesus sees the hypocrisy of the Pharisees. He discovers that these Pharisees were hypocritical. They did things that they did not mean them from the heart. The second thing is that Jesus sees the prophecy of Isaiah being fulfilled. He says to them, did Isaiah speak of you people, saying that these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. Want you to know that scripture? Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. In other words, Jesus realized the Pharisees put more emphasis on the tradition of men more than the command of God. I'll be preaching on that in a short while. The third thing that Jesus discovered is that he discovered the Pharisees were esteeming the traditions more than the commandment of God. They were esteeming the traditions more than the commandment of God. The fourth thing is that Jesus challenged the Pharisees by making a contrast with the commandment of Moses and a tradition called the Korban. Jesus challenged the Pharisees by contrasting the commandments of Moses with a tradition called the Korban. The Bible says in verse number 10, For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and you curse his father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is Korban, that is a gift to God, then you no longer let him do anything for his father or his mother. Then verse number 13, making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down and many such things you do. Let me explain what Jesus means by the cobra. Can you say the cobra? Say it with some power. Say the cobra. The cobra was a Jewish practice that had been corrupted. It had been a practice that was expressed, that it was done commonly amongst the Jewish people, but for all the wrong reasons. The Bible records that we ought to honor our father and our mother. But the Jews devised a way that they could escape from the honor that they were supposed to do. Now listen to me, friends. Honor is not just what you say with your mouth, but honor is also expressed with what you have. So it was not just a way of saying, I honor my father and I honor my mother. They were expected to honor using their material things. But this is what happened. People would go to a corrupt priest and they would tell the corrupt priest, there is something here, I want you to receive it, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to declare that all my material things belong to God. And because they belong to God, I cannot share it with anyone. I cannot even share with my own parents. The Korban was a corrupt way of escaping responsibility of honoring your father and mother. So they would go to these Pharisees and tell the Pharisees, please come and declare and come and make a declaration of all that I possess and declare it wholly unto God. And they would come, they would do that, they would be given something for that. And all of a sudden, somebody who had his parents, he had his relatives, he had people that were depending on him. He stops to support them, he stops to bless them, he stops to honor them. Because things were declared to be covered. So Jesus challenges the Pharisees and he tells them, because of this tradition, you now are leaving people without honoring their father and their mother. That is what the common was. And because of that, the Pharisees were enriching themselves. They would take that money, they would come and do that declaration. And what would happen is that this tradition carried on and fathers and mothers were being dishonored. 
Now let me say something here. Many of us are looking for prosperity in many different ways. But I came to discover prosperity has got to do with you living all the days of your, of your life and living it well. And God has stipulated that if you honor your father and mother, everything will go on well with you. Now many people think that prosperity is in a bottle of water that a preacher is preaching. They think that the prosperity is in the face towel of a man of God. I came to say to you, your prosperity is locked up in the word of God. If you put this book into practice, if you put the principles in this book into practice, prosperity will follow you. Amen. So the Pharisees had made the people of Israel not to be prospering because they limited them. Using the tradition of Corban from honoring their fathers and their mothers. And Jesus comes and tells them, this is a tradition that has made the word of God to have no effect in the lives of people. Now it is not that the word of God is not powerful. It is not that the word of God cannot deliver you. It is not that the word of God cannot set you free. But there is tradition that is hindering the people of God from experiencing all that God has for them. Tell your neighbor there is a tradition that is dangerous. Turn to the other one who doesn't want to smile at you and tell them there is a tradition that is dangerous. Can I preach here this morning? I said, can I preach here this morning? I have discovered that there are many traditions we uphold as Africans, as Kenyans, and as verse 13 says, we make the word of God of no effect through our traditions. I try to list them down. There are so many. I'm going to give you 10 and I'll be out of your way. Are you ready for them? Number one, there are traditions that surround our gender. Traditions that surround our gender. You know, there are people, when they discovered that their first war was a guy, they were disappointed. Because according to their tradition, if your first born is not a boy, there is something wrong. But I came to declare, the word of God says that children are a heritage from God and the fruit of whom is his reward. There are traditions that limit us because of our gender. There are some people who refuse to educate their daughters simply because they say they are going to be married and they will go away. Through your tradition, you have limited the word of God. But today I came to declare the devil is a liar. Every tradition that is standing against you, that tradition must come down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Traditions that limit us because of the way they perceive you. Because you came from a particular clan. We don't expect you to succeed. Because you came from a particular community. We don't expect you to succeed. I came to let you know the Bible says. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 35. That God is not a respecter of person. Regardless of your clan or your tribe or your community. Regardless of your family name. I came to declare to you. That tradition cannot stop you. Your destiny is great. Your future is great. Your tradition cannot stop you. Through your tradition, you have made the word of God of no effect. So the word is declared, and because of tradition, and this is the problem, we get exposed to tradition before the word. So when the word comes, the word finds a barrier called tradition. Can you say with me tradition? tradition. Say it one more time, say tradition. tradition. The second tradition surrounds the birth of babies. Traditions that limit us, they surround the birth of babies. There are traditions that when a family gets twins, they never saw the blessing, they saw it as an omen, they saw it as a taboo. And chances are probably that in the families we came from, there were children that were destroyed simply because they arrived as twins. Traditions that surround our minds. <clears throat> and listen to me, these traditions are so strong. Some people have degrees, they have enough degrees, many degrees like a thermometer. But you still find them holding on to some silly tradition. I came to preach today that these traditions must go down. Through our traditions, we are making the word of God of no effect. 
Tell your neighbor traditions can be dangerous. You find the people educated as they are, exposed as they are. They are telling you, I am just eight months pregnant, but I cannot deliver my child in Nairobi in a hospital. So you find them at nine months and two weeks, they are looking for a bus to go home so that they can go and deliver their baby somewhere in the village, somewhere in the hidden forest, and somebody who is strange is the one that is receiving them. I came to declare these traditions that are limiting the power of God and the work of the work of the word of God in our lives must be destroyed. Yes. The births of babies, very strange things. A strange woman receives that baby and declares things on top of that baby. And from the word God, that's where the trouble starts. That is why we have to dedicate our children before the Lord. That is why you must know who is the one receiving your baby. What do they do in the placenta? You are doing it in the village. Some strange person takes the placenta and they go and declare some things on top of that life. I don't know about you, but if there were things that were declared on top of your life, today we are reversing it in the name of Jesus. Today we are breaking it in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. The third tradition. These are the traditions that surround the naming of children. Traditions that surround the naming of children. Imagine. By now, if you're a believer, you must know that names carry power. I say names carry power. There are spirits that are attracted because of names. You know, in African culture, there is a way we dedicate and name babies. When I was in primary school, they would tell us, that in our cultures, babies would be, would be lifted up and the names would, would be called of dead people, dead ancestors. People that did not worship God. People that were not living right before God. People that were worshiping storms and different kinds of things. And they would begin to call names. And if the child started crying, they would move to another name. And until they go to a place where the king would either sneeze or smile at the name, then they would say, that is your name. How many know these things are true? How many know these things are not in Afro cinema or these are things that are here with us? Let me see your hands. Can you say tradition? tradition. That is how they name babies. Others would name babies after animals. They would name children after animals. So the spirit of slowness. They never do anything on time. That is why you did not get to your interview on time. That is why you did not get married on time. That is why you're not doing anything on time. It is because there is a name that is attracting a certain spirit. Because of traditions, I came to declare whatever tradition on top of your name, that tradition must be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Can you say a good amen? Well, well advanced in here, the book of Luke chapter number one, you find the story. There. The angel of the Lord appeared to Zachariah and told Zachariah, you're going to have a son. He's not going to be an ordinary son. You are going to call him this particular name, the name John. When the child was born, still in chapter one, the book of Luke, the relatives said, we cannot call him this name because there is no one amongst us that is called by this name. That is the power of names. Let me give you another biblical example. Jabez, the book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, starting from verse number 7 through to verse number 10. The Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. But there was a problem with him. His mother had given birth to him in pain and said, I will call him Jabez because I've given birth to him in pain. The Bible says later on, Jabez discovered this and he said to God, Oh, that you would bless me, that your hand would be upon me, that you'd enlarge my territory, that you'd keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Yeah. The power of names. This thing is so serious.
business. What is the name of your business? Some of us, the name of our business is what is restraining the prophetic word that is declared from this pulpit for you to progress. You have a very strange name for your business. Siafu Investment. <laughs> oh, I came to declare some of these names that are limiting you. Some of these names that are limiting your business. Those names are coming down today in the name of Jesus. We shall remove your hair saloon. So people read that name, they refuse to come to your saloon. Because they want to keep their hair, you are removing their hair. <laughs> Tell your neighbor names are serious. The days of watching television and seeing a good name of a, of a South American actor and naming your child are over. You don't know what that name means. There are enough names that are locked up in this book. If you can get a name of an anointed man, a name of an anointed woman, and you call your child, I guarantee you, you shall enjoy the results years to come. Yes. Names carry power. So there are these traditions that surround the naming of our babies and our businesses. May God give you a divine name for your business, a divine name for your company, a divine name for what you are doing, so that the blessing of God is attracted by that name. Read the Bible. When men met with God, they established altars and they left the altars after something they discovered of God. So, you to China, the as believers, we cannot do. Why do you think the Indians are progressing? They are calling their businesses behind the names of their gods, and they are putting their symbols of their gods. As we don't want to call our businesses by the name of the Lord, I came to declare to you: if and if God is going to lead you to turn around the name of your investment company, the name of your business, may you do it and receive the blessing of the Lord. Amen. Anointing breaks the yoke, butcher. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm telling you. <laughs> Number four. Let me stop. <laughs> there are traditions that surround our initiation rites. Passage into adulthood. There are traditions that surround that. Initiation rites. Kwa kiswahili, zile shukuli zinazo zingira. Kwenda chandoni, kutahiliwa na tohara hizo. There are many things in there that are dangerous. Let me make it practical. When young men are taken to initiation, they are given an identity. They are told now you are a man. And as a man in this tribe, this is how you talk. This is how you listen. This is how you operate. This is how you relate to women. This is how you relate to your wife. They are given an identity because of the tradition. So, when they come into the church and you're preaching to them, these are the keys for a successful marriage. It's a problem. <laughs> there is a system in operation. There is a Windows 95 that is still locked up in their system because there were things that they were told when they were going through their initiation. So when the word of God comes and says, husbands love your wife, they have a problem with that because their tradition does not accommodate that. I came to say, we have made the word of God of no effect. Amen. For our tradition. Tell your neighbor traditions. Yeah. And this initiation, they, they are, oh my goodness, some of them are so severe. People are taken through a lot of, of, of oaths and they are told to say things and they are covenanted with evil things. Whatever covenant you could have been put in, today in the name of Jesus, according to the word of God, we break it now in the name of Jesus. Traditions. Jesus said to them, you have made the word of God of no effect through your tradition. And many such things you do also. Number five, the, the traditions that surround choice of spouses. Even if you don't say amen, it is still a point. 
There are some certain cultures. Your case was closed even before you could talk. They said this one, there. That one, there. Traditions that surround this. Number six, traditions that surround weddings and marriage ceremonies. Weddings and marriage ceremonies. That is the day you knew that you had an aunt all the way from Zimbabwe who came with a pot carrying some things there to anoint you. Say traditions. Say traditions. And these are the things that are limiting the word of God to have an effect in our lives. It's not that there is no power in the house of God. It is not that the word of God is not giving results. But there is a barrier called tradition. That is what is stopping. Number seven. Traditions that surround deaths, funerals, and annual memorials. Mm -hmm. Death, funerals, and annual memorials. Be closing in a short while. There are traditions that surround these things. And you find the believers heavily engaged. Can I preach here this morning? Yes. Somebody is not a faithful tither in church. But because somebody died, they are willing to even take a bank loan to transport a dead body by air. And to participate in the death. And to participate in the burial, in the funeral. Traditions. They must shave your head. When they shave your head, where are they taking the head? You, you think it's just another tradition we do. But there are some of these things that are limiting the word of God in our lives. So they take your hair and they make sure when they are shaving, they cut off so that some blood comes out to make sure you are still connected. I came to declare whatever tradition that it may be that is hindering the word of God from having an effect in our lives may it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I say may it be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Number eight, there are traditions that surround our response to life challenges. Our response to life challenges. Challenges like sickness, barrenness, strife among his relatives, strife among his family members. How our response? We've grown up in cultures where if something went wrong, the first person you call is a witch doctor. Na anakuja, mtu waki mwenye na mbebe ya kikapu. Come, they do their things, they do their things, they do their things. So we have grown up knowing that whenever you encounter a life challenge, there is always somebody who will come and they will give you something. They will say something. You'll pay some little money. And that is why there's some people, even if they come to church and we pray for them, they know there is still another option. We've got to go and visit somebody that is hidden somewhere in some funny place because we believe our answer must be something that I'm given to tie around my hand or to tie around my waist. I came to declare the devil is a liar. These traditions must be destroyed. Your answer is not in what is tied in your hand. Your answer is not in what is tied on your waist. Your answer is in the word of God. Amen. The Bible declares in Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word and he healed them. And delivered them from all their destruction. Your answer is in the word. To help you to preach to your neighbor, tell the neighbor, yeah. your answer yeah. is in the world. Yeah. There are people, when there is trouble in their office, they don't run to a man of God. They don't run into a closet of prayer. I came to declare, if there are people where you walk and they're using those things, those things will not walk again as here. You are covered by the blood of Jesus. There is power in the word of God. There is power in the name of Jesus. They will not walk. When two powers meet, the lesser power must bow. When two powers are in contest, the lesser power must go down. And there is no power that is greater than the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care where that witchcraft is coming from. I came to declare to you there is power in our God. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. If they have threatened your position, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. If they have risen against you and they want to demote you, the name of the Lord is still a strong tower. Regardless of the challenge of life, I came to declare to you that the name of the Lord is a 
a strong tower. Touch your neighbor, tell them we have a name. Touch your neighbor, tell them we have a name. Number nine, the traditions that surround development and progress in life. Development and progress in life. There are people, because of fear and intimidation, they cannot build a house in the village. And as a person is younger, what are you going to be buying? Swears it ever, what are you walk? I came to declare to you, you cannot live your life in fear. You must step into a place of courage, according to the song that you led us a short while ago, and realize that the one who is leading you, he is loaded with courage and power. There are people who are not making any development or progress in life because of the fear of the unknown. They are afraid. What about? I came to say to you, you belong to the tribe of the Lion of Judah. And when this Simba and Aza Kunguruma, Hakuna Kitu Itakayo is here. This year in the name of Jesus, whatever development that you have struggled to do because of fear, that fear is going in the name of Jesus. You must progress in life. And the people, they know. If I'm going to progress in life, let me go and look for something. Somebody must tell me something. Somebody must give me something. Listen to me, there is nothing you need from a man. All that you need is from God. Amen. Number 10, the traditions that surround our relationship with God, His servants, and the church. The traditions that surround our relationship with God, with His servants, and the church. Some of the Missionaries that came before introduced a culture in us that whenever we come to church, we come to be given something. It's maybe bread, it's maybe milk, it's maybe clothes, it's maybe something. So there are people who come to church, they believe, I'm coming to receive something. So when you teach them about tithing and giving, because of tradition, they have always grown up knowing the church is the place where we come and we take. I came to declare, whatever tradition that is hindering you from exploiting maximally in with your relationship with God must go down. Amen. There is a way we were trained to look at men of God, to look at pastors, look at preachers, and it has limited us. Jesus told his disciples, whoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet receives a prophet's reward. Some of us when we were growing up, we saw preachers, just as ordinary people, who are walking about, they are doing things together with us, they are moving from one home to another, and we've grown up with the same. So when a man of God is making a declaration, when a man of God is releasing a prayer, because of the tradition, you cannot receive. Listen to me, spiritual things are received by how you see. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you receive the prophet's reward. You just don't receive it by hands. Nah, it's how you see. How do you perceive the work of God? How do you perceive the kingdom of God? How do you perceive the servants of God? How do you see them? I'm not going to be kikawaida. I'm to be mungu kikawaida. And that is limiting the work of God from having an effect. But today I declare. Whatever tradition that it may be, may it go down in the name of Jesus. May it go down in the name of Jesus. Close your Bible, you're not moving. I don't know about you this morning. Could it be possible that there are traditions that are binding you from experiencing the fullness of the promises of God? From experiencing the fullness of the word of God. From the word of God of having an effect in your life. I want you to think about your own life as an individual. Is it possible that there is a tradition you are upholding? There is something you were told. Maybe when you went through your initiation years ago. And you are still holding on to it. And it is making the word of God of no effect in your life. I want you to take a moment and think, and we're going to pray.
we sing this song all to Jesus this afternoon. I want to ask every one of us to stand up and to surrender everything to the Lord.